G'day guys, welcome. Sometimes serious, sometimes stupid, mostly seething, rarely satisfied. That is what's on my profile here on my YouTube page. Um, and that's basically what you get from this channel. Um, today will be relatively serious. Yeah, I'm not in a I'm not in a joking mood at the moment, um, and I know my last video in regards to Carlton was a muck exit interview video I did maybe two or three days, four days after our season finished, and it went down. Let's face it, it went down like a lead balloon with with some of you. Um, didn't quite hit the mark. Some of you found it quite funny. That's just me. I, I, sometimes I'm going to be stupid on this channel, and if I can't be stupid, and if I can't be me on this channel, it's probably it's probably best I, uh, I pack up. Um, what you get here, I don't try and put on a front. Um, I try and be as authentic and as real as possible, and, and, and part of that is not is not being obsessed with with the amount of subscribers I have. The amount of views I have, the amount of likes I have, I rarely, I rarely, in fact, I can't remember the last time I asked people to subscribe to this channel. And if you don't generally like, if you if you click onto one of my videos and it's one where I'm taking the piss, then just, just go, oh, okay, that's not for me and go somewhere else. Um, because I'm going to continue to do that and I'm going to continue to do the serious stuff as well. Um, if that's not your cup of tea, that's okay. You know, you don't have to, you know, you're not paying, I'm not, you know, I'm not paying for my services. Um, and I've always been a great believer in, I just put the stuff out. If people enjoy it, they will subscribe. You don't have to subscribe, you can just come back. Um, anyway, I'm glad I got that kind of off my chest. Um, but I am here to be... Yeah, to, to be relatively serious in regards to us. Um, and I have, it's been a little bit deliberate, actually, the last three weeks without talking about Carlton. I have been, of course, I've been thinking about it and reading and following. And I mean, the club have been really prolific in regards to the, the interviews and, and leaders talking, you know, Weedering, Cripps, Walsh. Charlie, they've all spoken. Harry's spoken. Young players have spoken. Um, club are very careful what the players say, though, uh, and it wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised if all those players were sat down before those interviews um, to sell a particular type of message to the fans. And we are drip fed. Um, and what I mean. We've got no idea really exactly what's going on behind closed doors in the last three weeks and what's really being discussed. Um, we can just come up with, you know, what we think in regards to where the club's heading and what we should do and all that type of stuff. But we've got no idea. We've got no idea. We think we do, but we don't. Um, but I did make a conscious effort that I would not be being sucked in um, with anything that the club will say from the end of the season through to the start of, by the time the, the, the first game of next season, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to um, be sucked into the hype. I, f I feel like it's been a long time for this football club. It's been 30 years since our last premiership. And yeah, I just, uh, I, I, the talk, they've, they've got to talk. I oh, know they've got to talk. They've they've got to talk. It's part of selling hope and it's a part of building a supportive base. And But, yeah, I'm, not, I'm just not in a position to to really worry about what what the coach or the captain or the president are saying. And I feel like the club have done it really well. They've done it really well. I'll, I'll give them that. They've just said enough, but not said a lot. <laughs> um, it's almost like they want they want to say that this disappointed, but also sell it that geez, look where we've come from. 
you know, like be grateful. Look where we've come from. We were once a shit club. We're now a, what Patrick Cripps has called it, we are a solid club. I think the, the, the president and the coach are using good club. Um, and they're seeing that as a huge step from being mediocre to good. I, I actually see it a little bit differently. I feel like that since Voss has been in charge and Luke Say has been in charge and this new this new era, um, feel like, and, and, and the talent which you have on this list, you know, you've got one of the best players that's ever pulled on a, a football jumper for the club and that's Patrick Cripps and they've got the, you know, the Charlie Curnow and Harry and you've got this you know, like elite players all over the park. We've invested in the draft and and I feel like this that, that step from being that mediocre football club that couldn't couldn't find their way to what we are now, that's kind of we call it an easy step, but that was the expected step. Um, whether this group that's running the football club now has got it in them, got the nous, got the nous, got the ex the real expertise to take us to be that great club is is questionable, um, and that's okay. That's okay, but I'm certainly not going to get sucked in by anything the club says from now until round one next year. Anyway, I'm here to talk about the the the, the, the trade because that started. I mean, it sort of started last week, didn't it? And um, <clears throat> how active we will be, I'm not quite sure. Um, you know, I listened to Nick Austin and what he's had to say today. I'm sort of glad that we're, we're keeping pick 11, or it's now pick 12. Um, this is a, a really strong draft, a really even draft. Um, and there will be some, some absolute quality available with that pick. But I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling there's something brewing. Um, and we want to get hold of that pick 13 from the Suns, which Collingwood want, and they seem to be the front runners now for Dan Houston. And I really rate Dan Houston. I think he's a wonderful, a wonderful player with the with the skill set that we need, you know, and that is, you know, that is that elite, elite kicking ability. He's a beautiful mover. Um, he's not he's not top echelon player, but he's got the the the, the required traits that we need. And, and one of our big weaknesses is is his skill, kicking, kicking ability and his ability to Change up the angles and kick long to position with penetration is as good as any any player in the competition. So, would I be disappointed if we didn't get him? It is what it is, you know. And and I can understand that you're not going to give up everything for him. But um, I think it'd be a wonderful a acquisition. But we're keeping pick eleven. And we want to take that to the draft. But we are in the hunt for another pick, whether that's a Gold Coast pick thirteen, which we could then use to to somehow get Dan Houston to the football club. But it feels like. Collingwood are in the uh, in the prime position to get the uh, the Port Adelaide defender um, and the big move obviously on last week was on Friday free agency um, the free agency day on Friday and and, and Nick Haynes um, arrived at our football club on a one year contract and I suppose what I wanted to talk about in this video guys is I feel like. Yeah, we, we, we copped a bit of criticism about that, um, a little bit. Uh, you know, you, you recruit a 32-year-old a into your club, he'll be 33 next year. He's had some, some injury issues um, and couldn't, couldn't get, sort of fit in um, over the last, say, probably 18 months now, really, a, a real mainstay in that, that, back, that back line of the GWS Giants. And he certainly started to fall out of favour at the end of 2023 and only played the eight games this year and, and, and the Giants went with, as they should. I mean, you're talking Sam Taylor, Jack Buckley combination, Harry Himmelberg and, and Connor Iden. That's a, that's a pretty bloody good quartet um, to try and break into. But yeah, he's out of favour and, and he's decided to come back to Victoria, um, although he's been happy in Sydney for all that time. Um, he's decided to come back to Victoria and finish his, his playing days at the Carlton Football Club on a one-year contract. Um, whether it goes beyond that, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come down to how well he performs this year and whether we can, one, get him on the park and whether he can make us better. I mean, 32 isn't that old. I mean, he he's not well past his best. At his very best in 20, sort of, 
I reckon 217 through to 2021, he was he was an exceptionally good player and, and, and one of the players I really used to enjoy watching at at the Giants. And I used to think to myself, everything in in, in Nick Haynes is all is what I wanted in, in Lockheed Plowman. Um he could read the ball exceptionally in the air, super courageous. Not that Plowman wasn't courageous, but this bloke could read the ball in the air, high possession winner safe with the ball in his hand, um, could read the play, high possession, relatively quick, and he could move up the grounds. He was comfortable, comfortable being that sort of hybrid sort of defender. You could sort of play on a, on a medium tall, add a pinch play on someone a bit bigger, but could get up the ground and, and become really really dangerous player offensively. That was him at his best. Um, and if we were getting that, I'd be like, wow, you know, like this is, this is fantastic, you know, but we're not getting that. Um, what we're getting is a guy who's clearly, clearly in my mind, had one roll of the, one roll of the dice at the Giants left. You know, he was on the, probably on the nose at the end of 2023 and, and probably like had a big preseason. I'll go back to an article written by, Riley Beveridge at the start of this year, this year um, just after the opening round, which he played for the Giants, he played the first two games of the year, then was vanished to the uh, banished to the um, to the uh, to the VFL, where he spent extended period of time there, and then came back in and played a few more games. He played eight for the season, but there was an article written that he just battled the worst 2023 with, with scar tissue problems and staph infection and gut problems from taking too many anti-inflammatory tablets. And he, was, he was, wasn't in good form either. And he was just hanging on, you know, he was hanging on, but he decided to stay. One roll of the dice at the Giants because he could sniff, he could sniff a premiership um, under, under Kingsley. But this year it didn't work out for him. So he's finally made the move home. Um, well, when I say home, he's originally a Victorian. And we get him... I've I got no idea what version of, of Nick Haynes we are getting. And I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to get anywhere near the, the 2020 version when he was All-Australian and Best and Ferris winner. Um, but his numbers weren't that bad this year, whether it was at, at these eight games at AFL level, where he, AFL level where he was quite flexible. He could play up the ground. He played a bit on the wing. He had 137 disposals in eight games, which is an average of 17 touches. Um, and at VFL level, guys, he had nine games, 301 disposals, which is an average of 33 touches. Now, that's that's seriously, <laughs> it's seriously big numbers at a at a really high standard of football, and and the VFL is a high standard of football, and there no, there would be not one player at our football club in the VFL who could get anywhere near those numbers last year, particularly our defenders. So, I am, I am probably just a little bit cynical and weary of the fact that we're getting him so late late in his career and given those given those the the awful year he had in 2023 where he just had all these these physical and health problems um he's probably closer he's a lot closer to those those consistent hamstring carbs whatever problems than than he's not um and i know he got on the park this year and he says his body's okay. Oh, oh, you, you just have to have your doubts. And if you look at if you look at our back line, and that's what I want to talk about here is I think a lot of what's happening at the moment with us in regards to our defence, and I think we've got problems all over the ground, like any club really. We've got some issues through the midfield and even up forward as well. But um, when you bring in a 33-year-old to your football club and you look at what's on the list at the moment and what we've let go. And I don't disagree with, with any of the players that have been let go, but when you look at their ages and their profiles and where they should be in their football career, I mean, Caleb Marchbank being delisted, only 27 years of age. We rolled the dice on him uh, one year too long. Um, 
and just couldn't get him on the park. He's gone, but that age of 27 would be just perfect. Lewis Young, we've asked him to explore his options. He's contracted at the 2026. He's just 25 years of age, and that's a big contract for a guy that, yeah, showed, showed something in his first year at the football club, but has shown not a lot since. Um, he was okay, just okay when he came into the team this year. And Dominic Acuity, 22 years of age, didn't play a game in three years at the club. There's a lot of investment in a young player. And I know he was a Category B rookie. I think he was our first ever NGA player through the academy. But not to play a senior game in three years as a key defender and you invest that all that time into a player like that, it just then leaves a bit of a hole in regards to what what is left. Um, so you've got Jacob Wiedering as, as your big... I mean, he's, he's in a league of his own. I mean, not many clubs have got a Jacob Wiedering, um, but he's, a, he's that far ahead from a defensive point of view from our bigs compared to the others, it, 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 it's not funny. And, it, and it, look, he plays a slightly different role to the intercept defenders, but all the others, I mean, Mitch McGovern, I still think there's question marks on Mitch McGovern at 30 years of age, contracted to the end of next year. He's okay. He's okay. He's a good user. Um, he plays some reasonably good football, but, you know, he's, he started as a forward, came back. His body's a little bit inconsistent. Oh, jury's still out. Brody Kemp... Jury's still out at 23 years of age. And the other one who's still floating around, who I haven't heard a lot about, I know he's out of contract, is uh, is Sam Durden. Um, you know, he's played two games in two and a half years, which isn't a lot of bloody football. So I'm a great believer. I like the – and it's easy to say when a team like Brisbane win the grand final, but I'm a great believer in having those two, those two big blokes in your back half. And I mean your two big blokes – um, and we, that'd be Jacob Wiedering and, and you know, if it was Liam Jones, and I know we lost Liam Jones, but Brisbane Lions, Harris Andrews, Jack Payne. And Jack Payne's role, as, as, as much as it isn't in the spotlight and as much as it isn't, wow, we've got Jack Payne, is just as important as the role that Harris Andrews plays. Um, and we don't have that in our football team. And we haven't had it. We try and we try to have it with, with Lewis Young for a period of time, but it didn't work. Um, and I don't think we're, we're any closer to, to solving that problem. And I think it comes down to, and this isn't, this isn't a knock on, on, on Nick Austin. It's certainly not a knock on, on Stephen Silvani. It is what it is, but... Certainly, since Jacob Weider, I mean, we really haven't invested. I mean, you could say we invested in Domin Dominic Q as a youngster, but we really haven't in invested in a young key defender at the draft. And and I'm adamant, and I'll probably be proven wrong here, guys, but I'm adamant we will, with that pick 12 now, or if we can get another pick in my third, Austin say, if we don't get... Houston. He hasn't actually said if we don't get Houston, but he he would like to get another pick between 12 and 34, which is our next pick. I am adamant that we are into we are into a key position player, and I'll put a video out a while back now. Um, just go through my timeline. Um, I think it's titled something like "Who Were the Carlton Recruiters Looking at at this game?" And it was a game I was at, a coach talent league game. Was it the last game of the year? Yeah, I think it was the last game of the year. Uh, the Western Jets were playing the Calder Cannons out at Highgate Reserve in Craigieburn, and all our Carlton recruiters were there together. And I was 100% sure they were there to watch Harry O'Farrell, 196 centimetre. Um, Australian Academy, a player from the Calder Cannons. Um, I'm 100% sure they were there to watch him play. He'd been out, a little bit of injury here and there. And he plays in the APS as well, and he got fucking knocked out in the opening minute and a half of the game. And... Went off the ground with concussion and never came back on. Um, and then by half time, uh, Nick Austin, Mick Agresta, and Paul Brody, they'd gone. They'd, they'd packed their laptops, laptops up and they were gone. And I've noticed that, that Harry O'Farrell, um, he participated in the draft combine. Um, whether there were a lot of great 
key position defenders um, in this draft. Um, I'm not quite sure, but there may be a bargain out there. And, 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 and I think it's time now that we bite the bullet um, and not go for the quick fix. And I know Nick Haynes isn't necessarily a quick fix. I think it's probably a one-year option if he plays okay another year. But it's time to invest in a big, um, a big and, and really put some, some development and time and effort into that because I think you can't just be filling holes with, with, with ordinary sort of C, B grade players. You've got to put the time and effort into a youngster. And I know it's going to take some time and some pain in that process, but I think it's, it's, it's got to be done. And with, with the Camper Rally twins coming in, I think both of them will come in, both Ben and Lucas, and they're both sort of your midfield type players. I think it's, it's reasonable to say that the player that will go for earlier in the draft, whether it's with that pick 11 or 12, um, will be, uh, will be a key position defender. Um, and I've mentioned Harry O'Farrell, but there's a young kid also, probably a little bit smaller at 193, Alex Alex Tura from the Gippsland Falcons is is another one who's is sort of emerging at the moment. I actually really like, I think it's Adrian Cole from the Sandringham Dragons, but he's, I think he's, uh, he's either Hawthorne or St Kilda NGA. I think it might be St Kilda. I think he would be the perfect option for us. Because I love that model. I love that model of having your two your big your two big players who can complement each other, um, and who can be reliable, um, selfless, role player down back who's big but also skillful and know what they're doing offensively when they do have their ball in their hand. And you go back to the Lever and May combination in twenty twenty one, but the bloke that made their job a hell of a lot easier was with Harrison Petty. And unfortunately, Melbourne just haven't been able to get that right since. Um, so there, there it is, guys. Uh, that's that's my feeling at the moment. I feel like we're in a bit of a pickle, um, thus the the cheeky thumbnail. But that's where we're at. It takes it takes when you want to invest in someone big. It, it's not a quick fix because they're going to be playing a lot of VFL football and there's going to be a lot of question marks and and time being spent into those big players down back because you can't just automatically bring them in. So who we go with, who we go with to partner up with Jacob Wiedering is is a fascination over the next. Oh, I reckon right up until the end of the draft and and whether we even do something in the trade period, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, hope you're well. Uh, tell me what you think. How you're feeling about our football club going into this trade period. Is there anyone that you'd like to target? Um, do you think I'm spot on in regards to investing in a key position defender? The other one that's probably the one that I just quickly want to talk about before I, I do leave is Harry Lemmy at 201 centimetres, who I know the club did. Nice if they had high hopes for him as a key as a key defender after he started forward in his first year at the football club and, and played a bit of a, a dual role with um, Hudson O'Keefe when I think Alex Murkoff went down in the ruck and we, we didn't have him available that, that, that uh, in their first year, both Hudson and Keith and Harry Lemmy shouldered the ruck and did really well, um, drifted between forward and ruck. And then last year, given that we've got Harry and Charlie, they decided to play Harry Lemmy as a key defender in the VFL. Now, I didn't watch enough games of the VFL to see if that had any, any merit or any potential, but it wasn't long before Lemmy was, was pushed back forward. Um, but there is a... There is an option there as well. At 201 centimetres, um, he's a big, big lump of a lad and maybe the the the, um, the availability or even the options um, and the opening for him to become a, a key forward at our football club are probably limited given given the way we want to structure that part of the game with Jack Silvani coming back into the team as well. Anyway, speak soon.